from college football to college basketball as the debates and the breakdowns continue here on this Wednesday on the early line. Mark Zinno joins us for a second consecutive segment. As I said, the mouth in the South in college football, the mouth in the South for a big night in the SEC, in the SEC, excuse me, in college basketball on this Wednesday. Top 15 tilt tonight on Rocky Top in Knoxville. It is fourth ranked Tennessee and 11th ranked Auburn, a six and a half point number now, Zeno, in favor of the Volunteers. The over understands at 151 and a half. Are you surprised to see a full six and a half points in favor of Tennessee? I mean, yes, there there are some big numbers out there tonight in college hoops across the board everywhere. Like you, yeah. you better put your waivers on the table if you want to wager some money tonight in college hoops, because especially on these favorites who are laying big numbers across the board now. What you have in your back pocket with Tennessee is what has trended well this year is when two ranked opponents are playing, the home team is covering them better than 65% of the time. Um, True. Does that make me want to lay six and a half against Auburn, one of the most elite defenses in the country and one of the most efficient teams in all of America? How about no? I don't want to lay six and a half points, but you know, I, I would lean towards the Auburn Tigers here and the fact that they can keep it close. I, I think that there is a certain amount of uh, urgency. Now that we're getting down to the final two weeks of the season, you're going to start to see it. And and what's interesting, Ben, is what oddsmakers are telling you now over the last week plus, you're paying a premium on all these favorites that are at home. We've seen the dichotomy in home road splits across college hoops this year, and oddsmakers are absolutely either going to make you pay a premium from a yeah. number standpoint or a price standpoint to lay the points with a favorite. Taking a look here at the SEC standings as well. It is a monster game tonight. Tennessee currently in a tie for first place with the Alabama Crimson Tide. If we take a look at the odds market here at the FanDuel Sportsbook to win the SEC regular season, Tennessee is the favorite at a plus 105. Then you get Alabama at plus 130. Then Auburn plus 430. South Carolina 48 to 1. There's six ranked teams currently in the SEC, all within two games of each other heading down the stretch. Does somebody catch your attention or get your eye here other than, let's just say, Tennessee is the favorite to win it? Would it be crazy if I told you guys that Kentucky's win over Alabama and what they did last night might be the catalyst to get them going? Just from a pure value standpoint, they're undervalued at this point in time. Look, yep. this Kentucky team is not great, uh, especially defensively. There's a, there's a lot of flaws with them. But when you have an offense the way they do uh, and the way they walked into uh, Alabama and beat them um, and and – what they did last night on the road at Mississippi State and coming back after trailing, maybe it feels like it's the right time to buy on Kentucky right now and see if they can make a run at this thing and, and try to steal uh, the, the conference championship from, from better teams in Auburn and Tennessee and everything else. I mean, everybody in the SEC has been so closely packed this year. Kentucky's got some losses yeah. they probably shouldn't have taken. It's lowered their value a little bit. I just, you know, something to watch out. I said to, said to people last night, I wasn't playing – uh, Mississippi State last night at home. I just felt like there was a way that Kentucky was going to show up for that game in ways nobody really understood. And the formula of home unranked favorites got upset last night. And uh, Kentucky looks like a play on for me going forward. Kentucky has played 15 of its 18 SEC games. Now 10 and 5. They are technically only a game and a half behind Tennessee, who they end the year against to round out the regular season on the road in Knoxville. Now, Tennessee has the best price, as DRS just shared, but Tennessee's final four games in SEC regular season action, a gauntlet. Tonight at home against Auburn, Saturday that might decide the entire regular season conference championship on the road in Tuscaloosa, then on the road in Columbia against Lamont Paris in the South Carolina Gamecocks, and then back at home against Kentucky if Tennessee cashes that plus 130 number they have earned an SEC title tied at the top currently with Alabama who's a five and a half point road favorite in Oxford Oxford tonight against Ole Miss so here we have a road ranked team booked as the favorite does Alabama make good on that number tonight against the running Reds everything in my being wants to say yes. I believe Alabama is going to come out and just put a whooping on Mississippi. Now, the thing about Mississippi and Ole Miss is, look, the, the regression hit this team pretty hard 
midway through the season, right? All those close games that they won yeah. early on that led them to a 13-0 and start, you know, uh, and, and 15-3 and overall, you know, or 18-3 and overall before they kind of really got into the meat of the SEC schedule where they lost five of their last six. So we're starting to see them come back down to earth. This is still a team that shoots the ball really well. They're top 20 in the nation in, in three-point shooting. Like, that's always going to keep you in games, which against an Alabama defense that – What's the word we're looking for here, Ben? Stinks. Uh, and is 13 out of 14 teams um, in, in, uh, in, you know, defense overall and efficiency? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I hate laying this number on the road. I, I lean Alabama very much here. I would lay with them. I probably wouldn't play Ole Miss despite the fact that they're home. It's just winning on the road this year has been so difficult in college basketball. Flip it over to the ACC here, Louisville and Duke. Now, typically in the past, you might figure this would be a monster matchup with a close line. We open up at the FanDuel Sportsbook at a 20-and-a-half point number, which has dipped one point down to 19-and-a-half, so a heavy favorite for Duke at Cameron tonight. A total that's listed at 151-and-a-half. Before we get to the game itself, we're still waiting on news, Oof. I guess, for Filipowski, whether or not he's nah, going he's to good. play in this game, how healthy he is in this game, and also here for you, Mark. He's good. What do we think about court storming? Now, hear me out on this. <laughs> Let's just say Duke returns the favor with a 30-point win, and the crazies nah. storm the court at home, barreling into nah. Louisville players as revenge. Does it happen? Donnie, if Duke ever storms the court, ever, I don't care if you just won the final four in the national championship. If Duke ever storms the court, they should burn the entire university to the ground and never speak of it again. you got like seven national championship banners hanging in your gym. You've had the most successful college coach in history. Don't you dare ever storm the court. You know what you do when they win? Clap, turn around, walk up the steps, and get the hell out of the building. That's what you do. You're Duke for crying out loud. Don't even start that lunacy whatsoever. If the crazies want to yell profanity at players, I'm all for that. You run on that court, you should be shot on sight. And I mean that, okay? Oh, I want snipe. Hey, oh. That's, how, that's how much against. Here's that's how bow. much. Uh, yes, uh, nobody else is on that island but me. I'm taking full responsibility. No. That said here, uh, does this feel like an overreaction line? Like, come on. We're going to drop. We're going to lay 20 right now with Duke. Really? This is what we're going to do? Uh, there's no way I'm laying 20 with Duke. I understand how bad Louisville is. They're god-awful. Um, they're barely a, a, a power five basketball team at this point in time, but uh, this just is one of these massive overreaction lines. You know, Duke can turn around uh, and coast this game to victory, even without Filipowski if he decides not to play, you know, and, and not have to worry about it. But there's no way I'm laying 20 points with Duke. No way. So the, the injury report on Kyle Filipowski, who does not have a points prop listed for tonight, has varied and altered extremely so in the last 48 to 72 hours after the incident in Winston-Salem on Saturday evening. It was an ankle, then a knee, it was a sprain, a tweak, and now he's just a little bit sore. I would expect Kyle Filipowski to play tonight. I don't think they need him against a porous Louisville team. That if they hold on to Kenny Payne following this year, that Cardinals basketball program in Louisville, once proud, Man, it has fallen off in a big way. Duke, a 19 and a half point home favorite tonight. They had won five straight games entering Saturday's game at Wake. They had covered in all five, under in all five as well. Their first game since becoming the talk of the sports landscape and college basketball, not because of their great play as of late, but the court storm, the reaction to it, and everything that has been said, the conversation has gotten so out of bounds, it is just yeah. ridiculous. We don't need to take it this seriously. There are protocols that can be put into place to execute court storming safely, efficiently, and so nobody on either side is ever even put into harm's way. I do not believe Duke will storm the court tonight as a 19-and-a-half point favorite against yeah. Louisville, still a top 10 team in the country big big east battle for a couple of teams that hover around the bubble that includes providence and zeno since marquette was just lambasted by connecticut in hartford two weekends ago they have been on a mission they have been blowing out teams reflected in the price tonight the golden eagles in 11 and a half point home favorite against the friars is that spread too steep for your liking no, it's not. Um, look, I 
despite losing to UConn, uh, I think that there is an argument, and you know me, I do the same thing with college football. I think there's an argument to say that Marquette is a better team than UConn. Uh, and look, they're going to get a rematch with these guys uh, before the season is over. So they'll have a chance to, to prove to them that, uh, that they're equally on the same footing as Connecticut. Providence right now is a team that is planted squarely on the bubble along with St. John's and Seton Hall. Um, they need a win like this tonight, Providence does, to be able to sort of get them that quad one win. But, you know, this is a, a, a very much a, a tough spot for the Friars here. And despite the fact that they've won three in a row, uh, I, I don't like them in this spot. I would certainly play Marquette first half the way that they've sprinted out. Uh, to leads early on uh, when you're getting, a, you know, under six. If you can keep it under two possessions, I think you're in a favorable spot. But, um, you know, with, with the ten and a half, it's one of those things where typically if they ain't covering early, they ain't covering late. Uh, Marquette will have to get away early and sort of sprint away late in order to do this thing. I don't like the idea that, that Providence will be able to keep this close for the first 20 minutes and then all of a sudden Marquette turns on the Jets in, in the second half. Big 12 basketball here, Mark. Yesterday we saw the Houston Cougars mm. freshly minted as the number one team in the nation hold off the Cincinnati Bearcats at home, which gives them a one-and-a-half game lead here in the regular season for the Big 12 title. In second place, that's the Iowa State Cyclones, a game-and-a-half back, which means if they win tonight, will be within one game of the Houston Cougars. They're going to take on Oklahoma at home. This line opened up with the FanDuel Sportsbook as an eight-and-a-half point favorite towards Iowa State. That has now seen it go up to nine-and-a-half and a total of 136. Mm. Six and a half. Iowa State Hilton Magic tonight versus Oklahoma. What do you see? Um, I, I think Oklahoma is a fade right now. Uh, they've clearly come back down to earth. Uh, they don't look like the team that they did for the beginning part of this season that was ranked. Uh, this is a really good Iowa State defense, second in the conference in uh, defensive efficiency. Uh, I know their offense isn't great, but you know this is an Oklahoma defense that, other than the perimeter defense on the three point line. You know, they don't really present much of a challenge to, to anybody else when you look at it. So uh, I just worry if Iowa State has enough offensive moxie, so to speak, for a full 40 minutes to separate by this big of a number. Probably a stay away game for me, but I would lean Iowa State and lay the points. Yeah, I think that line is the way it is for a reason. Iowa State, who did beat West Virginia by seven on Saturday in Ames, did not cover as an 18 and a half point favorite, but the Cyclones still the best cover team in the Big 12, nine, four, and one against the spread. When you look at Iowa State, they have not covered in their last two once as a dog as well. But when things stand out from Iowa State, that was a push, by the way, against Houston, according to the official consensus betting line, regardless of where you got that, they had covered in seven of their previous eight. Mark Zeno. From the NFL to college football to college basketball, we appreciate your time on this Wednesday. Thank you guys very much. Go Johnnies tonight. Let's get another win for St. John's. Mm. On the road? In Hinkle? Oh, what a trap spot that's about to be. Disavow once again. We're back here on the early line in just a moment. 